A new PlayStation 5 related patent could have leaked a key feature for the system that I think would be a major win for Sony. Limited Run Games held a press conference yesterday with some announcements that I think were honestly pretty huge and Nintendo talks about the Nintendo Switch successor and addresses the hybrid model theory. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So the next generation of consoles is nearly here, and obviously the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe come this holiday season. Now, I've liked what I've seen so far from both consoles. I will be getting both consoles on day one because I think both of them are offering some unique experiences, but I think the PlayStation 5 event that we saw recently definitely sort of put Sony in the lead when it comes to building up hype for their system. I think they did a great job of showcasing games that were going to be on the system, and of course the system itself. Now, of course, there's a lot of mystery surrounding the PlayStation 5 and really the Xbox Series X, such as when is it going to actually release? What sort of price point will these systems be at? You know, I've seen videos that the PlayStation 5 is going to be super expensive. I've seen videos that the PlayStation 5 is going to be super cheap. I don't think anyone really knows until these companies actually announce what to expect as far as pricing is concerned. But one thing that is sort of a mystery with the PlayStation 5, where it's not really a mystery with the Xbox Series X, is when it comes to backwards compatibility. Now, the Xbox Series X will be able to play select Select Xbox, Xbox 360, and Xbox One games on the system. Now, on the PlayStation 5 side of things, we've heard a lot of rumors. We've heard that the PlayStation 4 games will be able to run on the PlayStation 5, but beyond that, the lineage consoles, the heritage consoles, we don't know anything about that. Will they be able to play some of your older classic games that you either enjoyed growing up playing or might have missed out on playing on? Well, a brand new patent has emerged that sort of shines a light on this situation, and it involves PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 games on the PlayStation 5. So basically this patent is saying that the PlayStation 5 via cloud service related things will be able to play PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 game emulation. When translated, it says that a large number of game titles across the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and various generations of game consoles can be stored and used via the cloud gaming library. These games can run on a virtual machine that mimics the operating system associated with each game console. And so obviously the first thing that pops into your mind when reading this would be PlayStation Now. Now, when it comes to all of these online services, I have most of them. I have Xbox Game Pass, I have Xbox Live, I have PlayStation Network, I have the Nintendo Switch Online service, but one thing I do not have is PlayStation Now because I never really saw the great value in it. However, if you are adding in a bunch of PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 titles via PlayStation Now to be able to be played without having to repurchase these games on your PlayStation 5, I think that is a huge, huge win for Sony. Now, personally, I would still like native compatibility. I would like to be able to pop in a PlayStation 3 disc, but I understand that that's not really feasible due to the architecture of the PlayStation 3 just being so complex. So to have this as sort of a backup way to play your PlayStation 1, 2, and PlayStation 3 games on your PlayStation 5 sounds absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, do you really buy a brand new console to play older games? And there are some people that don't, and that's totally cool with me. But the thing of it is, is I like to have that option. I don't like digging out individual systems to play individual games on those systems. I I like something a bit easier. And when it comes to things like PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 games, there's a good chance you missed out on a lot of great games on those platforms. I know personally I did, and I play a lot of video games. So there are games I want to revisit, or there are games I want to visit for the first time on these platforms. And I think this would be a huge win for PlayStation Now if they implement PS1, PS2, and PS3 games, and a bunch of those games into this service on the PlayStation 5, because that's something that's very attractive to me. That would get me to to sign up for PlayStation now, day one, no no questions asked. Like I would definitely want that. So I think this could be a key momentum factor for the PlayStation 5 if this patent turns out being true for the PlayStation 5. Of course, patents do come and go. Sometimes people patent things that don't end up being in the systems that they are entailing, but I think this is something that we will see happen. And I think this is definitely a step in the right direction for backwards compatibility on the PlayStation 5. Now, will they add in additional features to maybe up-res things? You know, that sort of 
remains to be seen of course when you buy a PlayStation 1 game on something like the PlayStation 3 there was some filters that you could do with it so I think that would be cool to look at but even if they aren't able to do something like that I'm definitely really looking forward to this because I'm gonna play Metal Gear Solid 4 again because well my PlayStation 3 sounds like it's about to go into outer space and orbit around the earth or something like that the thing is so damn loud but yes this is definitely a big win for Sony in my opinion let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below now while we haven't had a traditional E3 this year obviously some people were disappointed by that I think we've still gotten some really good game announcements thus far over the summer and yesterday limited run games held a presentation that I thought was absolutely awesome I loved limited run games presentation back in 2019 I have known these guys since like 2016 2015 maybe Maybe. I remember when I was a much smaller channel around four to five thousand subscribers I actually went to limited run studios a uh, home base of operations and hung out with both Josh and Doug for a day and I had a really good time it was a very relaxed atmosphere and it's amazing to see how small the company was at that time to see what they've grown into as a company now and I think they've done a good job of addressing some of the issues they had such as the supremely limited run of stuff where you couldn't pre-order stuff you had to wake up at a certain time and try to get your pre-order in now they've opened up pre-order for a much larger audience where there's time related things so I think that's a very good thing but like I said they held a presentation yesterday and there were some big announcements one of the things that I really enjoyed was of course Shantae being re-released on the Game Boy Color in a Game Boy Color cartridge now if you know anything about game collecting Shantae is one of the most expensive if not the most expensive Game Boy Color games so that game getting a re-release is absolutely fantastic and it's also coming to the Nintendo Switch as well for the first time so a Game Boy Color game is coming to the Nintendo Switch that really opens up some opportunities but really the two announcements that definitely stuck out to me sort of stuck out for the exact same reason the first announcement was space channel 5 vr for the playstation 4. now i know what you're saying to yourself rgt you, you, you don't do vr you don't own a playstation vr why do you care about that and that is a very legitimate question and i think it's pretty obvious why i care about that because that is a sega game a Sega game so now limited run games is working with Sega which really opens up the doors of opportunity because think of all those awesome games that came out on things like the Xbox 360 those arcade hits that from Sega that came out on the system the things like the Knights game that came out Daytona USA Virtual Fighter 2 those games are pretty much pigeonholed on those systems what if we could get some sort of physical collection of these awesome Sega games that released on the Xbox 360 during the Xbox Live arcade era of games I think that would be absolutely awesome there are a ton of great Sega games that should be released physically that have come out over the past few years that were just smaller projects so I think that really opens up the doors of opportunity but obviously the biggest announcement was the Castlevania collection getting a physical release on the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo switch and it's like exact same reason why I'm excited for Sega working with limited run games now you have Konami working with limited run games and once again that opens up the doors of opportunity I think things like limited run games are very important important because it shows companies that people are still interested in some of their games that maybe they just sort of gave up on or didn't think had any sort of hope Castlevania collection probably should have been something that got a physical release on day one from Konami but I mean it's Konami so seeing this game getting a physical release like this is clearly a double dip for me I'm just absolutely ecstatic that now limited run games is able to work with companies like Sega and Konami because I really think it opens up the doors for the future of limited run games and what else they could be doing doing with these systems these modern day platforms so hats off to limited run games I think you did an excellent job but I do want to recommend one thing you see there was a Game Boy Color game that was released by Konami that has been stuck on the Game Boy Color ever since it never has been re-released as far as I'm aware on any sort of compilation or anything like that and that is Metal Gear Solid on the Game Boy Color which is a fantastic game so maybe you could call up Konami and be like yo you know RGT and his crew of people they, they want to see Metal Gear Solid the Game Boy Color edition re-released can we do it it because I think that would be absolutely fantastic. And finally, during the 80th annual general meeting of shareholders presentation that Nintendo held a few days ago, there of course is a Q&A section where shareholders can ask questions to the board of directors for Nintendo. Now this usually takes a few days to be translated. Sometimes the news falls through the cracks about these conversations as well. But there's a very interesting story that has emerged here that as far as I'm aware, Spawnwave is the only other person who talked about it because he sort of shone a light on it last night. So shout out to Spawnwave for that because that's what we're gonna talk about in this video here. And that is about the 
the Nintendo Switch successor, the Nintendo Switch 2, if you will. Now, of course, the Nintendo Switch is doing very well right now. Of course, the game lineup for the rest of 2020 is a bit sparse right now, but we expect that to be changing very soon. But what about the future of the Nintendo Switch? What will the future for the Nintendo Switch entail? Will it actually get another sort of hybrid-like system? Will they try to do a powerful home console thing? Well, Nintendo actually commented on this during this shareholders meeting, and I think it shines an interesting light on Nintendo's philosophy with hardware going forward. So when asked this question, President Furukara said the following, our current generation game system, Nintendo Switch, has entered its fourth year since launch, but its momentum is increasing. We believe there are two factors behind this. First is the existence of two hardware configurations with different characteristics in Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite. The second is that the Nintendo's development resources are concentrated on developing content for a single platform, the Nintendo Switch. We want to extend the life cycle of the Switch while maximizing such advantages. Then Mr. Koshiyoda who is the director and senior executive officer of Nintendo said the following. In addition to the performance aspects, higher technical specifications, Nintendo's dedicated video game platforms are developed with focus on providing a comfortable environment for consumers to play fun software. From the perspective of playing with the image displayed on the TV, we believe that consumers can play Nintendo Switch on a TV or the game console screen itself. It has greatly increased the opportunities for gameplay in various scenes in their lives compared to previous consoles. Through Nintendo Switch, we made many discoveries about where a dedicated video game platform can fit into a consumer's daily life. We see the scenes on social media of children and families sitting around with around a game console to play, which gives us a renewed sense of value of our dedicated video game platform. We will utilize these experiences in carefully considering the form of our future game consoles will take. But since the Nintendo Wii sort of dropped off a cliff in terms of hardware and software sales for like the last year or two of its life cycle, Nintendo sort of had to push the Wii U out into the marketplace, and I don't think it was necessarily ready for it. I still think the Switch was what the Wii U was intended to be, and it's obviously working because Nintendo is able to do something that something like Sony and Microsoft haven't really figured out, and that is tap into that casual market that made the Wii so successful because you're able to bridge people who are used to playing things like mobile games and bring them over to the Nintendo library of games and of course the system. When you look at something like Animal Crossing, that game has sold ridiculously well. It's like one of the best selling games of all time for the Nintendo Switch already and it's only been on the market for a few months and that is because it was able to bring in more casual players who are used to cell phone like experiences to the Nintendo Switch and they're like, oh, I could play this game on my television or I could play it on the go. So the game never has to end for me and really that's the biggest appeal of the Nintendo Switch is the versatility of the system and it definitely seems like Nintendo understands that. I fully expect the Nintendo Switch successor to be another Nintendo Switch like system a hybrid system as far as what Nintendo is going to do forward because it is working for them. It is working for them in the video game landscape. They're not going to be able to compete with Sony and Microsoft in terms of teraflops and things like that but that's okay with the scalability that you're seeing in current generation games and even next generation games is going to make the Nintendo Switch still a a viable platform and then when you start to consider the fact that the Nintendo Switch 2 the Nintendo Switch successor will of course be a more powerful system than the system that is currently on the market for Nintendo I think this is the winning strategy for them you don't want to go into a head-to-head -head battle with Sony and Microsoft in terms of just pure performance and pure teraflops and things like that because it didn't really work out all that great for you when you tried it in the past with things like the GameCube going in a sort of different direction does sort of buck the video game trends but I think it's what makes Nintendo Nintendo a unique company and makes Nintendo stand out. I absolutely love the hybrid aspect of the Nintendo Switch. It is the best aspect of the system in my opinion. So to see Nintendo wanting to continue this with the next generation of Nintendo Switch consoles definitely completely makes sense to me and I think is the smartest thing to do. All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.